Hi YouTubers. Now I'm going to finish off the list of evolutionary theories I mentioned in the first video of this series by discussing the theories of gradualism and punctuated equilibrium. To start, I'll need to define a couple of terms, microevolution and macroevolution. Microevolution is used by biologists to refer to genetic changes occurring within a species, while macroevolution is used to refer to genetic changes occurring above the level of species. Since species themselves are often ambiguous to define, showing varying degrees of reproductive incompatibility and physical and genetic differences, as we would predict if new species gradually evolve from existing species, it should come as no surprise that the terms microevolution and macroevolution are similarly ambiguous and to a large extent arbitrary. Creationists and ideas usually use the terms differently than the biologist's definitions I gave, using microevolution to refer to small changes directly observable in experiments, and macroevolution to refer to large ones caused only by miracles from God, though in truth there is no good way to delineate between large and small changes. Darwin himself proposed that large-scale evolutionary changes occur through the accumulation of small differences over time, and so the evolutionary theory of gradualism is attributed to Darwin himself. Later, paleontologists kept noticing that although gradual differences can be found in the fossil record, there are often cases where a relatively big change is seen with no record of steps in between. Thus the theory of punctuated equilibrium was born. Simply put, Punctuated equilibrium is the theory that sometimes evolution doesn't happen smoothly and gradually. Instead, sometimes there's not much visible change, and sometimes there are jumps. Most quote mining found on creationist websites comes from these paleontologists from a few decades ago. Now, anytime you find one of these quotes that sounds like a respected paleontologist debunking evolution, try googling the quote to find the full context. Basically, every one of these quotes I've seen is either a claim by one of these paleontologists that large mutations occur more often than we once thought, or that it is impossible to know whether a particular fossil is a direct descendant or simply a cousin of a direct descendant. None of these quotes claims that evolution doesn't happen. So here's the meat of the debate between the relative importance of gradualism and punctuated equilibrium. Small mutations are more likely to be beneficial than large ones. This is because our body parts and chemistry have evolved to function together. Big changes in one part often require changes in other parts to compensate. There are likely cases where mutations of large effect can survive, though these are less common than for small ones. So, if gradualism is theoretically more common, then why doesn't the fossil record support it? Answer: It does. You won't hear quotes on creationist websites from modern paleontologists because the fossil record is much more complete than it was when the quotes used on these sites were written. We find all sorts of intermediates where none were known before. But there are still many gaps, right? Yes, though they are getting smaller every year. And the gaps that do exist can be easily explained. Fossils don't form every time something dies. Fossils are difficult to form, requiring specific conditions and luck. And some adaptations are too soft to fossilize at all. We don't expect to ever have a complete fossil record. Also, the early stages leading to new adaptation may not be as successful as the later stages. Thus, there are likely isolated populations that slowly develop a trait and then have a population explosion expanding all over the place. If we were to look at this using fossils from one specific location, we would find one form and then another form with no intermediates. In fact, we find plenty of evidence that this is what happens. The whale fossil record is a great example of how we have used evolution to correctly predict where we will find transitional fossils. According to the fossils we currently have, many of which were found in places specifically predicted by evolutionary theory, whales gradually spread out from the coast of Pakistan as they became more whale-like and less like land mammals. To sum up, gradualism and punctuated equilibrium are simply ways of describing the rate of evolution that are not mutually exclusive, and the more common mutations of small effect are compatible with both processes. I hope that this has cleared up a few bits of confusion for some of you. I'll try to address any questions or objections in future videos, so please give me some feedback. 